Hello, everyone. I hope you are having an incredible day. Uh, my name is Dinora Tovar, and today we're going to be speaking about Kotlin multi-platform for iOS developers. And this is going to be wild. It's going to be fast. So uh, first of all, I want to talk about that Kotlin and Swift are probably cousins. Uh, they look pretty much the same. And everyone is going to say, no, it doesn't look the same. But I'm going to show you a simple switch. Uh, and you will see that the, 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 the right one is in Kotlin and the left one is on Swift. They pretty much the same, right? They, they have a switch and they have multiple cases and they return a value. So um, many questions that I have to, over, the, over the information about this talk is that uh, the learning curve that uh, iOS engineers are going to have is going to be uh, really, really big. But in reality, it's going to be uh, smaller than you think. Uh, and probably you already know this, but Kotlin is not only for Android, it's for multiple things. Uh, for mobile cross-platform to server side, especially uh, Android has been widely adopted, like widely adopted. Uh, we have native uh, web development and data science. Um, and I want you to focus on mobile cross-platform and native because they are different, but they are also implementing one another. So uh, first of all, Kotlin Multiplatform is about business logic. And when I say this business logic is, I mean your models, I mean databases, I mean pure business logic. It doesn't have to do anything with uh, your UI, your sharp preference, et cetera. It's, it's not over that, it's about business logic. And the thing is that uh, Kotlin Multiplatform works like this. Uh, when you have your code in Kotlin, you can build, uh, the Kotlin, um, Kotlin compiler is gonna uh, run that code and gonna create a GBBM and a, a library for Android, a GGS for GS, <laughs> and a native code. You see, so now Kotlin multi platform is using Kotlin native, and this is gonna create a binary for iOS or even Windows. Uh, this is gonna be a framework, like a total framework, uh, and this is something that is they are working on it, but it relies on Objective C completely, and it's really cool, but you are gonna say, uh, I use Swift mostly on my products. So uh, what is going on in here? So Objective-C headers are pretty much annotated for Swift integrations and it's gonna be like really easy. You're gonna see it and you are not gonna believe it's Objective-C. It's, it's gonna be simple, but uh, they are working to make, make it different. Um, when you're working with Kotlin Multiplatform, what you are gonna have is that you are gonna have a folder that is gonna have uh, the common main that is mainly Kotlin one that has iOS code and one that has Android code. Uh, and you will have a, a library for Android and a framework for iOS, and you will have these common methods. Uh, and when I say that you are gonna be using the common is that when the compiler goes and try to create a, a, a library for iOS, what is going to happen is that you are gonna take the common module and the iOS module and it's gonna compile to something that you can run on a Swift application and that is gonna be able to run, right? So we have two options here. Uh, the, the first part is that you, we have a uh, Kotlin multi-platform first generation support from sub libraries, and we have the possibility to use Android and iOS uh, SDKs libraries, like, uh, like cloud, uh, like local authentication and things like that, because you are gonna have something like this. And this is really important because this is the only thing that you need to take of this, <laughs> of, this, uh, of this talk is that you are gonna have an expected function. An expected function is something you are waiting for to happen. And this, this function will live in your common module of Kotlin. And you will have an actual declaration of this information if you need it. If you don't, you, if you are using just, uh, Kotlin fair support library, you will not need this, but if you want to access, for example, or we are gonna see an example of uh, NEC user defaults or uh, HR preference for Android, but if you want to use it, you can use an actual uh, declaration and this function or class uh, can import iOS libraries. Just straight out of the corner. And for Android is pretty much the same. Uh, you can have imports of Android uh, information and for the example, you can have a save value and it's gonna be really easy. This is the most primitive way to save a value, right? Uh, you will have a, a user default and you can save this value and this key in an actual function. 
but you actually are referring to an expected function that is going to be living in different parts of the code. This actual function is going to be living in the iOS, um, iOS part of the library and the expect function in the common. For Android, it's pretty much the same. It's a sharp reference, but we already um, we are not taking that part right now. Uh, so you can have this uh, couple of libraries that are Kotlin first. There are supports for, for Kotlin uh, and you can start using it and you will be able to compile these libraries and use it in your iOS app. So you have Kitor and Kotlin serialization for things like IOs and uh, callbacks and etc. And you are using Apollo. Uh, I have good news because Apollo just recently launched this Kotlin multi-platform support and this is enormous because uh, we know that Apollo is really hard when you are trying to make some query, you can get your query and if it's grown, you will get a different results. So imagine that you are having uh, an, Android, an Android library in your iOS library, in your application, you, tr you are trying to obtain the same results from a graphic on Apollo. If you make one little change, the results are gonna be different. Uh, so take this in consideration. Apollo is really great. Uh, in Scotland Kotlin multi-platform, you will make it once and it will run everywhere. Uh, we have Seculite Delight for uh, databases, Codelane and Seculite. Uh, if you are using, mostly applications use uh, any kind of uh, database. So this is, this is really cool, right? It's gonna be one support and it's gonna be done. And you can have Kotlin date times because you don't have to do a big compromise with Kotlin. And, I, and, and this is really important, right? Because if you are, you are not, you don't have to rewrite your entire application. You have to uh, maybe write some scenario, maybe a feature and try, try Kotlin multi platform And if it works for you, you will put some effort on it. Yeah, but it can be as small as just putting I don't know, some, some date times and some formats for your dates. Um, so today we're gonna have two examples, like really quick. The first one is coroutines because we uh, are running on the over suspendable functions uh, and suspendable computation uh, pretty much is a coroutine and they, are, they look pretty much similar to what is going on right now with combine and, and, and publisher. And they are called and code streams, and you can start using it uh, right now because they are Kotlin multi platform support uh, for your scan. Um, well, you have uh, your you have your UI thread, and the user makes some click, maybe some uh, scroll, and you will get uh, a request. You will send a request, and this will run in a coroutine thread. This thread is a part. It doesn't attack it in the process of the memory. It's gonna be running with allocation memories not with garbage collector. Uh, and this is really important because that dispatcher is the only thing that is gonna be saturated in that time. Uh, so coroutines are suspended computation and you can start using it like this. You can make uh, a suspend function that gets a product and then it goes to an API or something else. And you will have to run this coroutine in some dispatcher. Uh, this dispatcher is a global scope that will, uh, made a callback because we need a callback in, in Swift because no, there is not support for, uh, for coroutines just right away. And you can call your controller with this and you will get a coroutine working on your presenter in your controller, wherever you have it, uh, you will have it like, uh, exactly like this and you can use it for your iOS and Android applications. So an Android application will run in a view model uh, and it will set up uh, anything on the on the coroutine, right? Uh, and one of my favorite parts is databases, uh, because we usually have tons of databases. Imagine a database that has a, a list of products, and it's pretty much simple, right? It creates a table and inserts an item, and that's all that it does. Uh, with SQLite Delight, you can start using um, an expect function for create a database. And this is, has to be a, a expect function because the way we create uh, databases are really different on Android and iOS. So, uh, but in your common model, you can have this product repository that has a product API and creates a database and it can get in fetch all the, all the products, right? Uh, 
but in the iOS side, you will have something like this. Uh, you have you will have an, an actual function that creates a native SQLite driver, and you will have to create that database on there because the databases are completely different. But the process of the queries are the same, and we can share that. Uh, when you have that, uh, we can pretty much uh, do something like this and get the function of the fetch products and just populate a table view with it. Just straight out of the corner, you can have uh, the opportunity to start trying Kotlin multi-platform. Uh, it's not a big compromise or anything like that. It's really simple. It's something that you can start doing right now. Just, just with analytics, for example. If you are using Firebase, there is already a plugin. Uh, I am working in a mixed panel product uh, to make this, um, to make the library Kotlin multi-platform first. Uh, and this is really, and this is really interesting because if you can share logic with just simple things, you don't have to make all the logic, but you can start uh, sharing some some simple simple details. And if you give it a try, let me know. It's gonna be a wild ride. You will learn a lot. Uh, and Kotlin is a beautiful beautiful language, <laughs> so give it a try. And if you have any question. Just ping me on Twitter or in the Slack channel. Uh, thank you so much. That was all for Kotlin Multiplatform for iOS developers. I told you it was going to be fast. <laughs> <laughs>